When we talk about NBA legends, we think of the likes of Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James. They left their mark on the game, no doubt. But when it comes to influence, there's one name that shines above the rest, Steph Curry. Now, Steph might not have LeBron's crazy athleticism, MJ's jump shot, or even Kobe's all-around game, but man, his shooting has certainly revolutionized the NBA. It's easy to say that he's the best shooter out there, but when you look deeper, it gets really crazy, to say the least. He's been selected to nine All-NBA teams and voted NBA MVP twice, including the first unanimous selection in league history in 2016. He's also the all-time leader in three-pointers. Phew! In short terms, Steph Curry is not your typical NBA star, he's in a league of his own. But the question is, if this man is still wrecking the league at 36 years old, just how good was he during his absolute prime? When the Golden State Warriors picked up Steph Curry 7th overall in the 2009 NBA Draft, there wasn't much to talk about aside from it being a relatively decent deal for the Dubs. But what looked like a decent deal turned out to be the steal of the century. In his first five years at Golden State, he was already showing flashes of improvement and the greatness we've come to expect from him. He averaged 20.3 points, 6.7 assists, and 4.1 rebounds over 336 games. Now, let's put that into perspective. Blake Griffin, the first pick in 2009, was putting up 21.5 points, 9.7 rebounds, and 4 assists in his first five seasons. James Harden, the third pick, was averaging 18 points, 4 rebounds, and 3.9 assists over 371 games. And even Tyreek Evans, who snagged the Rookie of the Year title in 2009 to 2010, was putting up 16.8 points, 4.9 assists, and 4.8 rebounds in his first five seasons. So yeah, Steph was right up there with the best from the get-go and made us dream of a future he would later dominate. After his first five years in Golden State, he started to grow as the leader of the team and of course it meant more responsibilities for him. Before the 2013-14 NBA season kicked off, Steph was coming off a season in which he set a franchise record with a massive 42 playoff three-pointers, and more mind-blowing was the fact that Jason Richardson, who held the previous record, was at 29 threes. And if that wasn't enough, he made NBA history by sinking over 300 threes in a single season. So the momentum was high for Steph, and he kept it going with another solid 78-game run in the 2013-14 season, starting in every single one, same with the previous season. He didn't just play, he impacted the team and became the first Warriors player to pull off an average of 24 points and 8 assists in a single season, joining the ranks of just 8 other NBA players who've achieved this feat. That's pretty darn impressive. But here's the thing. Sure, the stats are glorifying for any player and more glorifying for Steph, but he wasn't just a scoring machine, he was a master in three-pointers. Leading the league in three-pointers made for two years straight, totaling 261 in the 2013-14 season. As they geared up for the 2014-2015 season, the Warriors were sitting on a 40-year championship drought. The thing was, the Warriors weren't exactly top contenders for the title, which made Steph's insane numbers even more impressive. So, maybe he needed to give more than 100% for the NBA championship. The addition of Steve Kerr as their head coach for the 2014-2015 season shook things up big time as Golden State looked to become legitimate contenders. Kerr's style injected some serious energy into the team, focusing on speed and giving Curry the green light to shoot like never before. And man, did Steph rise to the occasion. He was on fire all season earning himself the NBA Most Valuable Player title after leading the Warriors to a stellar 67-win regular season while averaging 23.8 points, 7.7 assists, and two steals per game. During a game against the Portland Trailblazers, he smashed his own record for three-pointers made in a single season. And then, in the Western Conference Finals against the Houston Rockets, he went even further, breaking the NBA record for the most three-pointers in a single postseason. Now the stage was set for the big showdown against LeBron's Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. It wasn't all smooth sailing throughout the series, but in Game 5, Steph exploded with a jaw-dropping 37-point performance. The Warriors closed out the series in six games, clinching their first championship in 40 long years. In the Finals, Steph averaged 26 points and 6.3 assists per game. It was now a case of when Steph plays well, the whole team plays well. And whether we knew it or not, we were slowly entering the Steph Curry era, and it would go really deep. 
See, when it comes to playing ball, Steph has a style that's one of a kind in the NBA. It's like he's always moving with or without the ball, moving around as if he's following a definitive pattern, long, twisty sprints, quick cuts in tight spots. He's all over the court. Now, every ace shooter wants to cut down that space between catching and releasing, but here's where Steph takes it up a notch. He eliminates that space altogether. When he fires from long range, the motion always screams three points. At this stage, Steph was shooting more than ever before, and he made more too. More threes in the 2014-15 season, in fact, than any player in NBA history. They called him the baby-faced assassin from his college days, and in the NBA, he's known as Chef Curry for cooking up some seriously spicy plays. Steph Curry's style of play single-handedly transformed the Warriors from a mid-table team into a powerhouse squad, and as they geared up for the 2015-2016 season, everyone had their eyes on them expecting big things. And man, did they deliver during the regular season. They smashed records left and right, finishing with an insane 73-9 record, the best in NBA history. That's even better than the iconic Bulls team from the 90s who went 72-10 in 1995-1996. After clinching that first championship, they wasted no time, winning 24 straight games out of the gate and hitting a staggering 29-1 in their first 30 games. Talk about a historic start. Fresh off snagging the MVP award from the previous season, Steph took it up by leading his team to that historic record. He became the first and only unanimous MVP in NBA history, averaging 30.1 points, 5.4 rebounds, 6.7 assists, 2.1 steals, and shooting 50, 45, 90 from the field, he was on a whole other level. You know, it's impressive when legends like Shaquille O'Neal and LeBron James fell just one vote shy of unanimous back in the day, but not Steph, he swept all 131 votes in 2016. This MVP win wasn't just a one-time thing either. It marked Steph as the 11th player in NBA history to win the award in consecutive years and the first guard to do so since Steve Nash in 2004-05 and 2005-06. And get this. He's the only warrior, apart from Wilt Chamberlain in 1959-60, to 60, to clinch this prestigious award in franchise history. Steph led the league in scoring at 30.1 points per game and steals at 2.1 per game, which was his career high at the time. Joining the ranks of Barry and Wilt Chamberlain, Steph became just the third player in franchise history to average at least 30 points per game in a season. Steph also became the first guard since Michael Jordan in 91-92 to average 30 points while shooting over 50% from the field. Diving deeper into the stats, Steph attempted an eye-popping 11.2 three-pointers per game and nailed 5.1 of them at an insane 45.4% clip. Wrap your head around this because no one in the history of the league had dominated beyond the arc like that in terms of volume and efficiency. Now, the NBA has a 22-foot three-point line in the corners and a 23-foot nine-inch line elsewhere. But from 25 to 29 feet, Steph shot an incredible 44.6%, and that's more than a foot behind the three-point line. It ranked third, but guess who was ahead? Another great shooter named Steph Curry, shooting a jaw-dropping 45.4%. His overall three-point percentage was second that season, just behind J.J. Redick, but J.J. attempted 421 threes and made 200 of them, which is already great, but Steph, with 563 attempts, was on another level. Now, Steph didn't invent the three-pointer, but he was leading the revolution, supersizing it. He had 38 games with nine or more threes, and no one else has hit double digits. Allen, the previous record holder, took 1,300 games. Steph, just 789 to break it. But it's not just about that shot. It's the range and accuracy that make you gasp. 30-footers are his vision of floaters, and that signature jumper from the logo? Classic Steph trademark. He attempted 886 three-pointers in 2015-2016 while shooting at just 2% less. But wait, it gets even crazier. From 30 to 34 feet, basically the center of the court, he nailed 15 out of 26 attempts, hitting a jaw-dropping 57.7%. From half court, it's good! Shooting 78%. Uh-oh. Curry three! Here, we can see that he basically shoots better from farther away. 
He joined the 50-40-90 club, a group of players who have recorded at least one season shooting 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 90% from the free throw line. And Steph one-upped everyone by becoming the only member of the 50-45-90 club. Okay, what does Steph have if we take away his incredible shooting? Would he have become the star he is today if the three-point rule doesn't exist? These are questions many people have asked, but Steph is also a fantastic passer, averaging 6.7 assists per game. It's not just about scoring for him. He loves sharing the ball and is always moving with or without the ball in his hands. Watch how he plays off the ball. Freeze, oh, there's Steph, the fake, the drive, the feed in green. Out to Steph. Got it. Beautiful. All eyes are always on him as the main man for the Warriors, and Steph knows this, so he always moves to create space for other players when he is tightly marked. Defenders think they can relax when he's off the ball, but that's when he's deadliest. His movements keep defenders on their toes, mentally exhausting them. See how he moves inside the area, making it hard to figure out where he'd move next. And before figuring that out, he's already with the ball, and you know what comes next. Again, another three. The 2015-16 season wasn't with much joy for the Dubs and Steph as they fell short to the Cavs in the finals. Despite leading the series 3-1, the Warriors lost in seven games, becoming the first team in NBA Finals history to lose a series after holding a 3-1 lead. It was sweet revenge for LeBron James in Cleveland and a tough pill to swallow for Steph and the Warriors. There were two images from the finals. First was LeBron James's epic chase down block against Andre Iguodala, which helped clinch the championship for the Cavs. Slightly less celebrated, but no less impressive, was Kevin Love's lockdown defense on Steph in the closing moments of Game 7. He stuck with one of the best offensive players in the game, step for step, and prevented Steph from getting a clean look. Depending on your perspective, it was either a huge mistake by Steph, or it just showed that he might have been playing through some sort of injury. He suffered a sprained knee in the first round against the Houston Rockets that cost him nearly two weeks, an injury that was compounded by ankle and elbow injuries once he returned. Yes, Steph was injured for most of the playoffs and that affected the Warriors' game plan. But no, that's not an excuse for failing. Golden State was just minutes away from winning a second consecutive title despite Steph's struggles with fitness, and had they succeeded, no one would care about his injuries. Although to be fair, a number of NBA fans didn't care about those struggles while the games were still being played. It seemed as if people were making excuses for Steph when he played poorly while celebrating him as the best player in the game when he played well. You have to give credit to the Cavs. They made the most of Steph's limitations, pounding him as soon as he crossed half court and forcing the rest of the Warriors to beat them. Injury or not, Steph didn't quite replicate his regular season magic, but he still smashed Danny Green's record with 27 three-pointers made in the finals. Fast forward to the 2016-2017 season, and Steph, looking to put the finals loss behind him, nailed his 200th three-pointer of the season, making history as the first player to do it five times consecutively. Before then, he broke the record threes in a single regular season game and also became the fastest player to reach 1,600 three-pointers. When the playoffs came, Steph took charge this time around, helping the Warriors sweep through the first two rounds. He dropped 40 points in Game 1 of the Conference Finals and hit a clutch three to rally the Warriors from a 25-point deficit against the Spurs. The Warriors ended up setting a new NBA record, going 12-0 in total in the playoffs. Facing Cleveland again in the finals, the Warriors weren't going to let another lead slide as they beat down Cleveland in five games, clinching their second championship in three years. In Game 2 of the finals, Steph sealed the deal with his first triple-double. 32 points, 11 assists, 10 rebounds. In the summer of 2017, Steph signed a groundbreaking five-year, $201 million extension, making him the first player to ink a Supermax contract. The Warriors went all out to keep their superstar, and who can blame them? He was currently the face of the NBA, and he was changing the game. Remember when three-pointers were just a sideshow act in the NBA? Then Steph came along and changed the game completely. Suddenly, everyone wanted to shoot from deep like him, his range is just magical. He's draining shots from 30 to 35 feet like it's nothing, hitting an unbelievable 54% from that range. Meanwhile, the rest of the NBA is struggling to keep up with just 35%. But it wasn't just about the distance, it's about how he does it. His ball handling, those lightning quick releases off the dribble, it's all part of his game. In the 2017-2018 season, Steph led the Warriors through yet another impressive regular season, but then he suffered that injury in late March. He was out for weeks, but when he came back during the second round of the playoffs, he came back stronger than ever. 
In the final showdown against Cleveland, yes, Cleveland again, Steph set a new finals record with nine three-pointers in Game 2 of the series. The Warriors ended up clinching the series, securing their second straight title sweep over the Cavaliers. But with Kevin Durant winning the finals MVP, Steph was still waiting for his moment. I mean, with a performance like that, what more could he have done to win it? The following season, Steph breezed past 16,000 points, inching closer to Wilt Chamberlain as the Warriors' all-time leading scorer. He also moved into third place of all-time at three-pointers, and at this stage, everyone knew it was just a matter of time. The playoffs rolled around, and after dealing with the Clippers and Rockets, they set up a conference final showdown with the Trailblazers. What made it extra spicy was that Steph's brother, Seth, was on the Blazers' roster. But no brotherly love was shown, though. Steph went off, averaging a series-high 36.5 points over four games, the highest in a four-game series sweep by any player. In the 2019 Finals against the Kawhi Leonard-led Raptors, there was optimism of a three-peat for Steph's Warriors. Steph gave it his all in this series, but despite his efforts, they lost in a six-game series. No triple threat of titles for Steph in the dubs this time. Now, the following season was supposed to be Steph's time to shine with Clay sidelined and KD off as a free agent, but fate had it the other way. In a game against the Suns, Steph took a nasty spill colliding with Aaron Baines, resulting in a broken left hand, surgery, and at least three months out of action. Steph would not return until March 2020, and by then, the damage had already been inflicted. Despite the Warriors entering the season as the five-time defending Western Conference champions and runners-up in the 2019 Finals, they finished bottom of the conference and had one of their worst seasons ever. In 2020-2021, Steph was on a mission to bounce back from that disappointing season. In late January 2021, he drained five three-pointers against the Jazz, surpassing Reggie Miller to claim second place in career three-pointers, only now trailing behind Ray Allen. Come April, Steph took dominance to another level. On April 12th, he went beast mode, dropping a jaw-dropping 53 points against the Denver Nuggets, surpassing Wilt Chamberlain as the franchise's all-time leading scorer, breaking a record that stood for 57 years. And he didn't stop there. Steph went on an absolute tear, scoring 30-plus points in 11 consecutive games that month, breaking Kobe Bryant's record for players aged 33 or older. He also sank 78 three-pointers during that stretch, setting a new NBA record over 11 regular season games. His April performance was just out of this world. He was named Western Conference Player of the Month, averaging over 37 points per game, shooting over 50% from the field, and hitting more three-pointers than anyone ever in a single month. And to top it off, he secured his second scoring title in the regular season finale against Memphis, averaging over 30 points per game. The oldest player ever to do so. But man, it was tough luck for the Warriors. Despite Steph's heroics, they couldn't make it past the play-in stage that season. In the 2021-2022 season, Steph started strong with an eighth career triple-double in the Warriors' season opener against the Lakers. In early November, he scored 50 points, 10 assists, and drilled nine threes against the Hawks, a career first, and became the oldest player to do so. Four days later against the Bulls, he finally snagged the NBA's career leader spot for three-pointers in both regular season and playoffs, surpassing Ray Allen's tally with his 3,366 three-pointers. He also made his 2,974th career three-pointer in December, which again surpassed Ray Allen as the NBA's all-time leader and made threes in the regular season. When it comes to Steph Curry, Ray Allen's record didn't stand a chance. I mean, Allen sitting in retirement and could just watch as Steph slowly but surely moved up the ladder to finally topple him. That's to say, if Steph stays healthy and plays for a longer time, that three-point record is going to be stretched beyond recognition. We're talking unbreakable sporting records territory here. In the 2021-22 season, injuries tried to slow him down, but Steph still managed to nail 285 threes. And let's not forget about his remarkable showing at the All-Star game. He set new records for the most three-pointers in an All-Star quarter with six, half with eight, and game with 16. Oh, and he passed James Harden on the mid-season classics total made threes list, moving to the top with 39. He's a three-point machine, there's no doubt about it. In the 2022 playoffs, Game 4 against the Grizzlies, Steph became the first player to sink 500 career playoff threes. 500! And then the NBA Finals against the Celtics. In Game 5, Steph passed John Havlicek for 10th on the all-time Finals assist list. He led the Warriors to victory, clinching his fourth title, and to top it all off, he finally claimed the NBA Finals MVP. 
He was absolutely sensational for the Warriors, averaging 31.2 points, six rebounds, five assists, and 1.7 steals in six games. Now that's MVP material. Steph led all scorers in each of the first four games, becoming the first player since Michael Jordan in 98 to do so. And let's not forget that epic game four when he dropped 43 points, tying the series 2-2 and bringing home court advantage back to the dubs. Even when he had an off night shooting in game five, going 0 for 9 from deep and finishing with just 16 points, he still made a huge impact with eight assists and solid defense. But when it mattered most, in game six, Curry stepped up big time. He led the Warriors with 34 points, grabbed seven rebounds, dished out seven assists, and even chipped in with two steals and a block. Being named Finals MVP was just the cherry on top for Steph to add to the Western Conference Finals as he was also named MVP, averaging 23.8 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 7.4 assists, and one steal in five games against the Mavericks. Maybe if it wasn't for LeBron James and the Raptors, Steph would and should have gotten a bit more than the four NBA titles. But the fact that we are saying that in a team that went 40 years without a championship before the era of Steph Curry just shows how big of an impact he had. We definitely won't see another Steph Curry in the NBA. He was so good during his prime that it got us wondering at times if he was human. Yeah, he was that good. But which was your best Steph Curry season?